Hello and good day again everybody. Welcome again to Steel Design and in today's video we would be discussing about the design of tension members. So this video lecture guys is in reference with the book of Jack McCormack and Stephen Cernak entitled Structural Steel Design 5th Edition and of course the National Structural Code of the Philippines 2015 Edition. Okay so let's go straight to the design of tension members part itself. So from the previous video lectures that I have uploaded, whenever that you are to design a certain structural member, the first thing that you should take into consideration is the manner in which that certain structural member will fail. And with that being said, guys, let us list all the possible failures for your tension members. So these are to be the common ones. So the first one is what we would be calling our gross sectional yielding. And let's abbreviate it as GSY. So your gross sectional yielding is actually your excessive elongation. Okay, so that is to be the first common failure for your tension members. And for the second one, that is what we would be calling tensile rupture. So let's abbreviate it as TR. So by the name itself, in this part right here, your member has already ruptured. So meaning it has gone its um, ultimate stress already and aside from that there is this thing what we would be calling block shear so your block shear right here is the combination of your shear stress and your um, tensile stress so there so once again when we are to design a certain structural member and in this case right here we are to design a certain tension member we must design or we must choose a certain member in which that if it is already subjected with tensile stress or tensile load it should not undergo any of this one right here so it should not elongate excessively it should not be ruptured and it should not undergo block shear so it would be as simple as that but take note guys that in designing your tension member another parameter must also be taken into consideration and that parameter is what we would be calling slenderness ratio. And slenderness ratio, guys, is basically equal to the effective length divided by the radius of duration. And this radius of duration right here can be seen in the table that I would be providing you very soon. Or you can just manually compute it. And by manually computing it, your radius of duration is basically equal to, so R is equal to the square root of the moment of inertia divided by the area. So if you would be getting the moment of, I mean, the radius of duration about the x-axis, the moment of inertia here should be, of course, along the x-axis as well. But if you want to compute for the radius of duration about the y-axis, your moment of inertia should also be about the y-axis. So it would be as simple as that. So in here, guys, about this slenderness ratio right here, according to the book by Jack McCormack, it is said here that the specification suggests that a maximum value of 300 should be used, of course, for the slenderness ratio. And with that being said, your ratio here, which is L over R, should not be greater than or equal to 300. So it would be as simple as that. But take note here, guys, that if you are to design a certain tension rod, the maximum slenderness ratio of 300 is not applicable. Thus, the value of your slenderness ratio for rods are left to the designer's judgment. So if you would be designing your rod soon, it is by your own judgment already. But since in this chapter right here or in this video right here, we wouldn't be designing a rod or we wouldn't be designing tension rods, we would be making use of this value right here, which is 300. Okay, so as per the design philosophy stated in the National Structural Code of the Philippines, and that is to be your LRFD and ASD, it is stated there. So as for both of these ones right here, it is stated there that the load P that is being carried by your structural member should be less than or equal to the strength of the member itself. So this one right here is kind of self-explanatory already. Since of course you want your member 
to have a strength greater than the one that it is carrying. So it would be as simple as that. And as for your LRFD, so for your LRFD, your load PU, so this PU right here is to be your factored load, guys. So factored loads. So your load PU should be less than or equal to the design strength of your member. And in LRFD, that is to be equal to phi times Pn, where Pn is to be the nominal strength of your member. And phi right here is to be your reduction factor. And similarly, guys, in ASD, your PA, and PA basically is your service loads. So when we say service loads, guys, these are the loads that are not factored or unfactored loads. And it should be less than or equal to your nominal strength divided by omega. And your omega is your factor of safety. So these two right here are the ones to be considered. So if you can remember, guys, in the analysis of tension members, given these parameters right here, so given, um, given your gross sectional area, your thickness of the web, or let's say anything that is related to the section itself, given those parameters, you will be solving for PU. But in designing, guys, PU is already given, and what you are actually finding out is the parameters that you need for that, I mean, for this VPN to be attained. So what do I mean by here? So let's say that you have a certain PU. And let's say that we are to design that structure to withstand this GSY right here. So gross sectional yielding. And if you can remember for your gross sectional yielding, so I will just be erasing this first. So in gross sectional yielding, your PN is basically equal to FY times AG. So with that, so your PU, so let's say that this is to be equal to F y times a g so given these parameters right here you would be solving for a g so this a g right here is to be the one unknown so with that guys so i have i forgot your reduction factor so there should be a reduction factor here since we are to talk about lrfd so cross multiplying this one right here so your a g is now to be equal to p u divided by P times Fy. So phi times Fy. And your phi, your phi in gross sectional yielding is to be equal to 0 0.9. So this one right here is now to be equal to 0 0.9. So that is if you are to design it to withstand gross sectional yielding. So this is to be the minimum cross-sectional area of, of course, your member. So that is for LR LRFD once again. And as for ASD, guys, so using this one right here, once again, your nominal strength is to be equal to Fy times AG in cross-sectional yielding. So with that, guys, your PA should not be less than or equal to Fy times AG divided by omega and cross multiplying this to solve for the value of ag ag is now to be equal to pa times omega divided by fy and your omega here in gross sectional yielding is to be equal to 1.67 so it would be as simple as that for your gross sectional yielding so what about for tensile rupture stress so let's have a new slide right here so for your tensile rupture, so TRS, so in LRFD, guys, your PU should be equal to, or I mean should be less than or equal to uh, phi FU times AE, where FU is to be your ultimate stress and your AE is to be your effective area. And your effective area right here is to be equal to U or your shear lag factor U times the um, the net area. And with this one right here, your net area is basically the gross sectional area minus the area of the hole. So let's, I mean, let's abbreviate it as a hole. So simplifying this one right here. 
So substituting this equation right here to this equation and substituting the um, resulting equation to this equation, this is now to be equal to, so PU is equal to P times FU times U times the gross sectional area minus the area of the holes. So there, for you to solve for this gross sectional area right here, we would be transposing everything to the other side, of course, since we are solving for AG right here. And with that, our resulting equation would now be equal to, so AG is now to be equal to PU divided by phi times FU times your shear lag factor U plus area of the holes. So here, this is to be the equation when you are designing a certain tension member in terms of tensile rupture stress. And comparing these two right here, so this one right here is for your gross sectional area for yielding and this one right here is to be your gross sectional area for tensile rupture stress. Whichever is larger between those two is to be the one governing, of course, between the two. So now that you have your eg or already or your gross sectional area you would now be checking if that certain member would withstand block shear and would satisfy this one right here so with those guys let's summarize it so what are to be the steps in designing your steel members so the first one that you would be doing here is for you of course to list the parameters so list parameters and these parameters right here are to be your, um, let's say, your FY, your yield stress, your ultimate stress. Let's say the dimensions of the hole. So, hole dimensions and whatnot. So, you would be listing everything that can help in your design. So, there. And after that, guys, what you would be doing next is that you would be getting the load combinations. So load combinations. So in this one right here, the values of your dead loads and your live loads should be given. So with those guys in LRFD, so PU in LRFD, that is to be equal to. So it may either be 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load or let's say 1.4 dead load, whichever is greater here. So the higher value would govern. So may it be 1.4 DL or 1.2 DL plus 1.6 LL. So this one right here is for LRFD only. And in ASD, guys, so your PA is equal to, of course, your service load. And that is basically DL plus LL. So these are to be the load combinations so after getting the load combinations guys the next thing that you would be doing is to solve for the gross sectional area needed for this pu and pa right here which was these things right here so this is for lrfd in trs and this is to be for its gsy and after solving for the Cross sectional area, but wait first, guys. I would just be moving this upward so that we would be having space. So, there, and after solving for your AG, the next thing that you would be doing is that you would be selecting a member already. So, select member from AISC shapes database. So, this shapes database right here would be at the description link below. So this one right here is a free downloadable Excel file from AISC themselves. So after selecting your member in AISC, the next thing that you would be doing right now is that you would be checking if that member wouldn't fail. So this is to be your analysis proper itself. And your in your analysis proper, guys, you would be checking if that member would withstand cross-sectional yielding, tensile rupture stress, um, block shear, and if that member has a slenderness ratio or L over R less than 300. So these are to be the things that you would be taking into consideration. 
So these are to be the tables or to be the data that we would be using for our design. So once again, we would be making use of this AISC Shapes database right here. So once again, this is to be a downloaded file, I mean a downloadable file in the AISC website itself. So there and we would be making use of this one right here once again. So these are to be your whole dimension. So for example, that we would be using a 20 mm bolt diameter and let's say we would be having a standard hole diameter then meaning that the diameter of the hole that we would be using is to be 22 mm so that is for this table right here okay and these two tables right here are also needed so we would be making use of the table by astm for us to determine the yield stress and the tensile stress respectively of your steel members of course and we would be making use of this shear lag factor table right here so this is basically page 42 of your reference book by jack mccormack or this is also page 5-54 of our national structural code of the philippines 2015 edition okay so this table right here will be used if we are to decide and analyze tensile rupture stress so there